25. Getting out of hand. According to Morris Dictionary of Word and Phrase Origins by William and Mary Morris, this expression goes back to the old days when failure to keep a firm grip on the reins would result in a team of horses getting out of hand. 24. Making the grade. The word grade is short for gradient, and the idiom derived from railroad construction in 19th century America. Back then, calculations had to be carefully made to ensure engines didn't encounter sudden steep gradients, and so workers would literally make the grade. 23. Sick as a dog. The origin of this phrase comes from the early 1700s when it was common to call someone who was undesirable and ill looking a dirty dog. 22. No brainer. This phrase has been widely used for the past five or six decades, and one of the earliest sources we have for it comes from an issue of the Lethbridge Herald of 1968, in which the following was stated about an ice hockey coach. He'd break in on a goalie, and the netminder will make one of those saves that our manager coach, Sid Abel, calls a no-brainer. 21. To hit the nail on the head. No one can be sure of its exact origin, but what we do know is that this phrase is really old. It appears for the first time in recorded history in 1438 in the book of Marjorie Kemp. Even though many scholars believe that the idiom in Kemp's book isn't entirely clear and probably has a different meaning from its modern use. 20. The best of both worlds. Even though the exact origins of the term are unconfirmed, the phrase has been part of the English language since at least the late 1800s. It's believed to have derived from the saying, the best of all possible worlds, which was used in Voltaire's novella, Candid, published in 1759. But the modern definition of the idiom usually compares only two situations as opposed to the broader comparison implied by Voltaire. 19. Break a leg. Although there are many different theories about the origin of break a leg, and no one can be 100% sure, the most accepted theory today suggests that break a leg was heard for the first time in British theater circles back in the 1920s. 18. Feeling under the weather. This idiom has a maritime origin. According to the Salty Dog Talk, the nautical origins of everyday expressions by Bill Beavis and Richard G. McCloskey, in old days when a sailor was unwell, he was sent below deck to recover, away from the weather. 17. My ears are burning. The origin of this belief goes back to Roman times when Augas, religious officials who observed natural signs, paid particular attention to such things. According to the Augurs, if your left ear burned, it was a sign of bad intentions by people who were talking about you. But if your right ear burned, then you should be happy because you were being praised. 16. Raining cats and dogs. You might be wondering why the sky would ever rain cats and dogs, of all things, but if you were into Norse mythology, then you would know that cats were the symbol of heavy rain, while dogs were directly connected with Odin, the ruler of Asgard and Storm God. 15. Getting up on the wrong side of the bed. In ancient Rome, getting out of bed on the left side was considered a bad sign and plain bad luck, and if you made that mistake, <laughs> your day was destined to be a very bad one. 14. Skeleton in the Closet In 19th century England, the periodical The Eclectic Review used this idiom in reference to a family who desperately tried to keep a son's illness secret by hiding him in the closet. 13. Bite off more than you can chew To bite off more than you can chew dates back to the 19th century America, where it was common practice to chew tobacco. Back then, people would offer others a bite of their tobacco block, and some would greedily take a bite larger than they could possibly chew. People began to notice this and forewarned others not to bite off more than they could chew. 12. Wrong end of the stick. Back in ancient Rome, people didn't have toilet paper, so they had to use a sponge on a stick every time they had to clean themselves after going you know, number two. However, if someone wasn't being careful when using the stick, they could literally grab the wrong end of the stick. Ew. 11. Cut me some slack. This idiom is believed to be nautical in origin and concerns not pulling on the rope so as to give the other person a chance to untangle it. 10. Hands down. There are a few theories about its origin, but it's widely accepted that it dates back to the mid-19th century in the genteel world of British horse racing. Back then, a jockey who would find himself way ahead as he approached the finish line would relax his grip on the reins and drop his hands. By the late 19th century, the idiom had been extended to non-racing contexts and remains in frequent use today. 9. Freak out! Freak out is the urban term that best describes a state of shock and it's believed to come from the wild 60s, specifically the even wilder drug scene. As such, freaking out usually referred to a bad psychedelic trip. 8. A piece of cake. 
The origin of the phrase goes back to at least the 1930s, and the term was recorded officially for the first time by the American poet Ogden Nash, who wrote The Primrose Path in 1936. In it, there is a verse that says, her picture's in the papers now, and life's a piece of cake. 7. When pigs fly. When pigs fly is a traditional Scottish proverb, which was first written down in 1586 in an edition of John Withel's English Latin Dictionary for Children. The dictionary had an appendix of proverbs rendered into Latin, of which one was the usual form of the proverb in the 16th and 17th centuries, pigs fly in the air with their tails forward. 6. Chip on your shoulder. Supposedly, it comes from an American game called Chip on Your Shoulder that kids used to play back in the 1800s. A chip of wood was placed on one shoulder and then the other had to knock it off. When the chip was knocked off, the fight began. Similarly, back in medieval Europe, a knight would throw down his gauntlet and if the opponent picked it up, the challenge was accepted and the fight began. 5. Other side of the coin. The origin of this idiom isn't 100% verified, but it's believed that it has been around since the early days of the 20th century when jurists, usually in order to get the full story, wanted to hear both sides since every story has two sides, and sometimes even more. 4. Show your true colors. The origin of the phrase derives from naval history. A few centuries ago, ships used to be identified mainly by the flags they flew to show which country they belonged to. However, ships owned by pirates would often sail under fake flags to approach their prey and eventually would show their true colors by hosting their real flag once they had conquered the other ship. 3. Get it out of your system. The strange thing about this phrase is that despite being amazingly popular, it doesn't have a confirmed origin. But it's believed to be associated with medicine, particularly with the detoxification of drug addicts in rehab. 2. Don't judge a book by its cover. The phrase goes back to at least the mid-19th century as found in George Eliot's The Mills on the Floss, where Mr. Tulliver uses the phrase in discussing Daniel Defoe's The History of the Devil, saying how it was beautifully bonded. And 1. Bite the bullet. The phrase was first recorded in Rudyard Kipling's 1891 novel, The Light That Failed, and its origin derives from the barbaric era before anesthetics were used in medical procedures. Injured soldiers had to bite on a bullet to help them endure the pain of an operation or amputation. Liking our lists? Be sure to subscribe by pressing the button at the top corner of your screen. And if you're still itching for more awesome lists, click on these nifty thumbnails created by yours truly. And be sure to show us some love by liking, sharing, and commenting.